Hi guys, welcome to the archive. So you guys seem to really like the magnetic table system that I showed off a few weeks ago, and at the time I mentioned that I had a few more accessories planned for it. Well, consider this stage one. Depending on how popular these videos turn out to be, I'm thinking of sprinkling these table accessory videos into the lineup every so often. We'll see how it goes. So if you like these modular table accessories and you'd like to see more different examples, more different designs, then the best way you can do that is by liking, commenting on this video and sharing it and making sure more people see it. So given how much this community seems to really love taverns, I figured that'd be a good place to start. Wine bottles and bread like I did in the original video, they're, they're great and all, but a tavern they do not make. With that in mind, I decided to make a few more accessories that were sort of themed around taverns, but that you could drop in in other places and would fit perfectly well there too. Tankards work pretty much anywhere. Beer bottles work very well in guard barracks and places like that. And let's face it, who doesn't love cheese and pies? I think the only one that's particularly tavern focused is the stack of plates. Although even then, if you really wanted to, you could use it to show a pile of dirty dishes in a wizard's laboratory or something. I don't know, be creative. Hopefully you guys will pick up some techniques from this too. I used a new material while making tankards and it worked out really, really well. So hopefully you, that'll be something that you guys can use. As usual, if you need tools or supplies for your build, you'll find a link down in the description to my equipment list where you'll find a link to everything that I use. And if you buy anything through the Amazon links there, you a little bit get to sent towards the channel to help support it. No extra cost to yourselves. Anyway, enough rambling, on with the build. To get started with the tankards, I wrapped the steel ruler in some parchment paper and attached some 3mm wide, 2mm deep neomidium magnets to it, south side down, so they detach nicely to the tables that I've already built. The parchment paper is there to protect the ruler and let me be as messy as I like with the glue. If you want to know more about where to get these magnets, check out the equipment list in the description. A quick way to make sure they're all definitely the right way up is to give them a pass with an existing accessory like this bottle. You should feel the pull of each magnet in turn, and if any push, then it's the wrong way around. The next step was grabbing some of this aluminium foil that you find takeaway containers made of, and cutting quarter inch strips from it, before wrapping it around a stack of magnets to get a nice cylinder. This method was inspired by some clever work from Miscast over on his channel, which you should totally check out, where he used the foil from coffee tin lids. Now the seals I get on coffee tins over in the UK don't seem to be nearly as thick, so when a friend of mine left her half-eaten cheesy chips in the kitchen, I improvised. Something to mention about this crafting material is while it's great and very flexible, it's also a bit sharp when cut. Not so much that you'll cut yourself by handling it, but definitely enough that you shouldn't try and straighten it by running it between your fingers while squeezing. Think of it as extra strong paper with a ragged edge. Once I had enough of those, I attached them to those magnets that I laid out earlier with a blob of superglue. It doesn't matter if you end up gluing these to the paper, you can just rip it off and it should only leave remnants on the underside. If you do get some excess glue on the bottom, a knife should be able to easily trim it off. Finally, I added a small handle made from the same foil using the tip of this clay sculpting tool to wrap it around to get that curve at the top. You could get away with using a cocktail stick for a similar effect. When they dried, I sprayed them all black and painted them with a dull metallic colour. I tried washing them with black wash over their natural metal colour, but it still came out incredibly shiny, just a bit darker. Which if anything looked even weirder. I find that miniatures kind of look better if they all share a palette, and if the metal on the tankards looks wildly different to the metal pretty much anywhere else, they'll stick out like a sore thumb. Much like my thumb, which at this point looks like it belongs on an 80s pop star. Next, I wanted a bit more variety to the bottles. The big bottom bottles are great for wine and give me Skyrim nostalgia, but I really wanted to put together some smaller ale bottles too. To do this, I rolled up a magnet with the south side facing out into a small sausage of putty. I used brown stuff, but you can just as easily use green stuff. I just prefer the way that this stuff is more workable with a knife after it sets. I kept the non-magnet end rounded and smoothed the whole thing by rubbing it with my fingers and a bit of water. 
I left that to set and when I came back I carved chunks out of a piece of cocktail stick until it looked like a cork, just like I did on the table video for the wine bottles, and then cut it down to the right size before attaching it to the top of my bottle with some super glue. I found that trimming the very top of the rounded bit of putty to be flat before attaching the cocktail stick helped give it a bit of a stronger connection. I also made the cork on these a little bit smaller than I did for the wine bottles, because the bottles are smaller. Finally, I coated the bottle part of the stick in Mod Podge to hide the wood grain, and when that dried, I added some more Mod Podge around the lip of the bottle. Then I painted them in a few colours, some dark green and some dark brown. I gave these a gloss varnish to get that glass look. For all of them, I didn't paint the bottoms, which helped stop them from sticking to the table. I also added a few custom labels, like the ones that I made for the wine bottles last time. This time I printed them on some parchment effect printing paper, which is not to be confused with parchment paper, that I have for making letters for players in my game. This worked a lot better than staining plain paper, as it didn't cause the printed designs to go fuzzy. All of these labels are available for download for anyone who supports the channel on Patreon as a quest giver, whether you joined in the past or just signed up today, as a thank you for helping the channel keep running. Finally, I wanted to add some more food, and what goes better with beer than pies? To make these, I first wanted some plates to put them on. Now, to make these stick to the table, I cut a hole in the bottom of them and put the magnet inside the plate, rather than inside the food. I started doing this because it gives a stronger hold, and honestly, I just found that it worked better. You can also do this with the wooden boards as well. You can just drill a hole or cut a hole in the wooden boards, put the magnet in there, and it'll hold a lot stronger. For the plates, I rolled up some balls of putty and used the top of a Citadel paint pot with a little bit of water to stop it sticking to flatten it into a nice plate shape. You could also use pretty much any rounded object of about the right size to do this. Once I got the shape, I flattened it back down onto some parchment paper. Some of these plates I wanted to glue together into a stack for decoration. The rest I was just going to use to put food on. It doesn't really matter either way, just make sure that the plates will be big enough to put your food on. For the pies, I rolled up a fat disc of green stuff with a rounded top, flattening out the edges with a sculpting tool. I put a south facing magnet sticking out of the bottom, but honestly I'd recommend just drilling holes into the plates or boards and gluing the food on top and putting a magnet in the underside. It gives a much stronger hold. I then poked two holes in the top before dribbling blobs of Mod Podge around the edge a few times to build up a crust. Once the plates and pie were cured, I glued them together. I then painted the pie in a mix of one part orangey brown to one part yellow brown to two parts tan. Basically the same colour as the bread from the table video. The paints I then painted as pottery in a sort of terracotta colour. Then I glued together leftover plates and drilled and cut a hole in the bottom to put a magnet in giving me a nice few stacks of plates that I can use elsewhere in the tavern, when I get around to making the bar and shelves as well as just the tables. Finally, I made a cheese board. I tried two methods for making the cheese, and one definitely works better than the other, though I recommend brown stuff more than green stuff for this, because it cures harder and is more workable after the fact. The first method I tried was making another disc of putty, which I then cut a triangle out of, nudged those two pieces back into shape with a sculpting tool, and added some cheese holes using a bit of wire with a dab of hot glue on the end. This, as you can see, was a bit of an awkward disaster. It just about worked, but I wasn't particularly happy with the outcome. The much better alternative was making another disc of putty, which I waited to cure before I then cut a triangle out of afterwards, and drilled in the Swiss cheese holes using a pin vise. This was so much better. Sharp defined edges, no awkward fumbling, and very distinct cheese holes. Parfait. The board I cut out of balsa wood after giving it a good going over with a wire brush. 
while the knife I made from cutting the blade out of thin plastic card and the handle from another bit of thin balsa wood. Both of which I stained using some Army Painter Soft Tone like I did for the boards in the table video. The magnet for the piece I included in the board itself. I cut out and covered it with the cheese on top, all solidly super glued together. If you're finding this video useful, it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe or even share the video to help me reach more people like you. Finally, I couldn't help myself and decided to make more than I planned, namely these apples. Mostly because they were really easy. Literally all you need to do is ball up green stuff to about the right size and poke a thin wire in the top. The one I used was about half as thick as paperclip wire, which I then clipped off with some wire cutters. I used green stuff for these, but again, pretty much any modeling putty will do. At some point, I'll probably even get around to trying out that Procreate that I bought two years ago and have never even opened. Seriously, I am terrible for procrastinating learning to sculpt better. Then I just plopped a few down on plates and plopped a few in a bowl. I made a ton more than I needed, both of apples and cheese, but I plan on mixing and matching these with some other food that I plan on making in the future until I have a feast worthy of a Baggins pantry. And that's all there is to it. I've now got a bunch of flavorful accessories that I can slap down on a table or other pieces of furniture that I've got planned for future videos and just, yeah, get some awesome looking terrain on the table and add some atmosphere. It's also much easier to add depth to enemies when your players are reminded that they're actually living, breathing humanoids, that the food that they've left on the table was something that they were actually going to eat before they came to fight you and probably die. All that poor bugbear wanted was to finish his pork pie before his shift was over. I hope you guys got some good ideas or inspiration from this video to build something new. That new material, honestly, I, think I can see myself using it a lot more in different builds. It was really quite flexible and it gives me something other than the usual foam and cardboard to play with. As usual, let me know what you like about the accessories or things that you'd like to see in future in the comments. I love hearing from you guys every time I release a video. It's one of the best parts of the day. If you enjoy these videos that I work on for you guys every week and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by joining me in the archive on Patreon. By doing that, you gain access to a ton of printables, including the bottle labels from this video and loads of others from previous videos. You also gain access to a ton of other little perks, so go check it out, see what you think. Most importantly though, you'll be helping me provide the community with more free modular tutorials like this one. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with a brand new system that's small like this one, but it is full of potential. Until then, I'll be in the archive. <laughs>